Can you talk about some of the other options that people might have, some natural solutions for pain relief? Uh, acupuncture comes to mind, and I'm sure there are others. Mm -hmm. uh, acupuncture has been studied uh, extensively, and there are some very good protocols for acupuncture in pain. And there are some creative ways that acupuncturists are making uh, their services available uh, for large groups of people at low cost. So for example, there's group acupuncture that can, can be, it is done at certain uh, institutions, acupuncture schools, um, uh, places like that. Um, and, uh, and so that can be very helpful. The, the military is teaching a battlefield acupuncture uh, that is a series of needles in the ear that are called semi-permanent needles. They're just these little, they look like little tacks and they stay in your ear and can stay there for as long as three days. Uh, they found that by using it, uh, well they use it really they really do use it on the battlefield. They're training all the medics. They're training a lot of people to do to do this technique. And they'll use it in the transports as well. So they'll have people who are gravely injured and they'll be transporting them uh, to whatever is the nearest hospital that they have to get them to. And they find they can dramatically reduce the opioid use uh, by doing this. And this is people whose legs have been blown off, who's, who are gravely injured. And they're able to uh, help control their pain using um, battlefield acupuncture. It doesn't mean they don't use any opioid, but they're dramatically able to reduce the amount of drugs that they have to use. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so acupuncture has many, uh, many uses. Um, hot and cold, of course. I mean, those are probably as old as we are as a species, uh, uh, but they work, they help. Uh, some people are helped uh, by magnets. I'm really fortunate. I'm a magnet responder. Uh, we don't know enough about magnets. There has been some research done. I believe there was a group of um, uh, orthopedic surgeons at Vanderbilt University who developed uh, some uh, magnets, I think, back in the 80s. And uh, they were very powerful magnets that, that you could purchase and that could go on your body and reduce pain for some people. And they did studies on them and uh, had some good literature. It didn't really take off. I don't think it was uh, financially as viable as some of the other uh, solutions, but that doesn't mean it wasn't useful. Um, uh, if magnets work for you, they're absolutely wonderful. And there's a variety of different ones out there. Uh, I recommend the more powerful ones. I don't want to use brand names. Um, uh, a lot of the magnet companies don't like to advertise themselves as uh, treatment of anything medical because then, then sure. they, they have to be regulated in a different way. Um, so they, they talk about prevention instead. Uh, but they're always worth a try. Um, there's uh, far infrared sauna uh, that can be really helpful. People with fibromyalgia tend to really enjoy going into that type of a sauna. It's a dry sauna that's not too hot, okay. um, but it heats your body through light and you can stay in it for 30 to 45 minutes uh, once you get used to it. Uh, if you have severe fibromyalgia, you may have to go in it, start slowly, start with five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, but it can be very, very helpful for pain, and so reading about that can be useful. Important to make sure you're getting a, a sauna that's non-toxic. So I recommend the ones that are made in North America uh, from uh, uh, non-toxic non-toxic non substances, not ingredients, I'm talking about cooking, uh, materials, non-toxic materials. And so the, whoever the company is needs to be aware of toxic glues and, and whether pesticides have been used on the wood and things like that. Uh, but those can be very, very helpful. Epsom salts in the bath, sure. that's a great one.